Hi, this is Eva for Once Upon a Timeline, and today we're going to discuss lots of new weird cloud formations. Okay, here's an interesting one starting off, is that this is actually the regular sky here, and this is a huge storm that came through, and so there's a really clear dividing line between the black, black storm and the clear sky. And this is something I've been noticing lately around here, not to this extent, but I have noticed that a lot of the clouds around here are becoming more dramatic, uh, more difference between the light and the dark. So this is a pretty good example of that. But what brought this whole subject on was uh, this post recently in Retcon from Shirley You Realize. And this is a, an image that she took on her phone live yesterday in Arkansas. And you can see that this huge storm is coming in and right next to it is the clear sky. And uh, yeah, obviously she thought this was a little bit creepy. So this is a um, live report almost just from earlier today. Of course, nobody in our group has seen anything that extreme until this was posted. So that's, uh, that's really interesting. It just seems like it's getting more and more extreme. But I have been kind of watching the cloud formations in the last few years. And uh, maybe a couple of years ago, I started seeing these where they would refer to them as supercells. Now, when they first talked about supercells, it was just kind of a rather extreme strong storm. But over the last couple of years, they've really morphed into something, things that are really strange looking. And these are the storms that often breed tornadoes. Um, here you can see the lightning, and look at how thick that lightning is. I've noticed in even just the last few weeks that lightning is getting a lot thicker looking and more meaty than it used to be. And uh, these supercells continue to just get weirder and weirder. I mean, you used to pretty much only see this kind of a thing in a movie uh, via special effects. You didn't see it in, in real life. Here's another ridiculously creepy supercell moving in. And uh, even more creepy one. I mean, if you saw that coming, it really does look like something out of a, an apocalyptic movie. Okay, so there's been a lot of other weird clouds. A couple years ago, I first saw these on a documentary. At that time, they were called roll clouds. And they were only in one place in the world. And so although I had never seen them before, when I saw them on the documentary, I was like, oh, well, it's just this one place in the world, really far away, and they're really rare, and that's why I never heard of them. But uh, now they can happen all over, and they happen in that one place more often, but basically they're everywhere. So that's really changed from a couple of years ago when I was first introduced to those roll clouds. Here's another weird clouds. It's called Mamatis cloud. Um, this is one that I heard about a couple of years ago, and they said that they were new. Uh, brand newly discovered weird clouds. Well, now they've been just known since 1894 by William Clement Lay. So they're not new anymore. Okay, now these are brand new. I just discovered them today, although I've seen a few photos, and I think I even mentioned uh, it recently that there was weird coloration in some of the clouds, and I wasn't sure what that was. Well, now I know what they are. They're called polar stratospheric clouds. These wonderful and weird-looking clouds are unique to the polar regions and form at minus 77 degrees C or lower temperatures. Due to their high altitude and the curvature of the surface of the Earth, these clouds will receive sunlight from below the horizon and reflect it to the ground. And the result is the spectacular light show. Unfortunately, these beautiful clouds are also responsible in the formation of ozone holes. They support chemical reactions that produce active chlorine, which creates the holes. Well, I'm not going to worry about it too much because I never even heard of them before. Anyway, really beautiful. And like I said, I'd, I'd seen recently some photos with these very uh, beautiful clouds in them. Um, here's another one new for me. Just maybe a year ago, I heard about the wave clouds. I guess they're now Kel Kelvin Hemholtz wave clouds. That one's kind of a new one. This is just from a factory. Lenticular clouds have been around for a couple years now, but they keep getting weirder. Okay, so another weird one has been this one. The fall streak hole or hole punch cloud, sky punch. Um, it's this thing. It's basically a, uh, a punched out area in a regular cloud 
So people were saying, oh, a UFO went through it or something about six months ago. But this thing is getting, I'm seeing more and more of these. And this is the first time I saw this weird black thing in there. So uh, that's kind of a, a little bit of a new one. Okay, now this one, I saw this one a couple years ago, but it's getting more and more extreme. At, at that time, it was just called asparatus clouds, and they were considered to be new. Um, now it seems like the name is jumping around, and sometimes they're called undulatus asparatus or Jacques Cousteau clouds. Uh, that name was not around when I first looked, but they are uh, pretty creepy looking. It, it almost looks like Photoshop. Uh, here's another one. I mean, that doesn't even look real. It's pretty weird looking. And another one. Still doesn't look real. Then uh, lately, I've also, like just today, saw this one. I've never seen that before, but there's a number of them on the, uh, on the Google search now. Let's see. And there's, I think there's a video for this one. Yes, there it is. There's a video doesn't really show much, but uh, it's probably not photoshopped is all that really says about it. Um, no word on what causes those. It's supposedly it's still a mystery. I'm sure eventually we'll hear the scientific explanation. Okay, this is a new one for me. Alto cumulus cloud. I have not heard that word before. Uh, you can see there are a number of photos of these, I guess they must be common enough they have their own name. Uh, so, again, pretty weird. And uh, this one I just saw today, it's a, it looks like it's a variation on lenticular clouds, and it's, it's called a hat cloud. And uh, there's one other one that I was seeing recently. And these are noctilucent clouds. I heard about these um, a couple years ago, and like just maybe, maybe just more like a year ago. Uh, it was shortly after I learned of the ME, and uh, they are high stratospheric glowing clouds. Supposedly, they are near the poles. But last year, they made an announcement that the noctilucent cloud season had started early, and I was kind of tripping out because I never even heard of the noctilucent clouds, not to mention a season for them. And here's a little info on them. So basically, they'd have to be really, really high clouds, and the phenomena just has to be just right in order for them to uh, show. These intensely shining clouds can on occasion be seen during the summer season from mid to high altitudes. From mid latitudes look close to the western horizon well after sunset. Noctilucent clouds are composed of water ice, though the source of the water at the altitudes they form is uncertain. Uh, that's an interesting one. So water way up, but yet how did water get up there? Since they occur so high in the atmosphere, they reflect the sun's light hours after local sunset or before sunrise. They're often mistaken for cirrus, but for much higher. Anyway, there are some of those things. Now, when I first heard about them, uh, they were just at high altitude latitudes, not at mid latitudes. So that's a little bit of a shift. Okay, one more weird one here. Cloud iridescence. So you see all these colored clouds. And I did recently get an image that somebody else took of one kind of like this uh, nearby. Just a bunch of rainbow in the cloud, basically. And the storyline here is uh, most observed in alto cumulus, cirro cumulus, lenticular clouds, and cirrus clouds. The colors are usually pastel, but can be very vivid. The ones I've seen have been very vivid. I actually did see a little tiny one a couple months ago, too, uh, but it was very vivid. It was not a pastel. Unfortunately, my phone just would not take a decent picture of it. The effect is similar to irisation. Iridescent clouds are diffraction phenomenon caused by small water droplets or small ice crystals individually scattering the light. Larger ice crystals do not produce iridescence but can cause halos for a different phenomena. Okay, and here's the last one. Nacreous clouds. This one's a couple years old. Mandela effect sometimes called mother of pearl clouds, are rare, but once seen are never forgotten. 
So they have a little bit of a, of a more pearly look to them. They're a little bit less extreme. They are filmy sheets slowly curling and uncurling, stretching and contracting in the semi-dark sky. Compare with dark scudding low altitude clouds that might be present, nacreous clouds stand majestically in almost the same place, an indicator of their great height. They need very frigid regions of the lowest, lower stratosphere, some 9 to 16 miles high and well above tropospheric clouds. They are so bright after sunset and before dawn because at those heights they are still sunlit. So anyway, lots of weird, weird cloud stuff, a lot of rainbow, kind of typically what we've been seeing of a lot of the new phenomena, just weird and colorful. And uh, there, there's constantly new ones coming out, so it pays to keep watching because you never know when something else is going to show up. This is Eva signing off for Once Upon a Timeline.